Well, I'm Shanu Mapleton. Thank you for coming. Uh, welcome to Sector 11 and Caposphere. Um, this is, you know, a pretty exciting seminar for me because I think it's, it's something that's really, really important to really all of us. We all have sports cars, whether they're Lotuses or Solstice Skies, Atoms, Ferraris, you know, Corvettes, you name it, we're sports car folks. And, and alignment, a proper alignment is, is, is an important thing to do in your car. And today, really, our goal is not to teach you how to do every single step in an alignment, but to give you guys a good overview of some of the key aspects of doing an alignment. Okay, so let me get a couple of housekeeping things out of the way. Uh, we've got a bathroom that's right back there. I'm sure you guys have seen uh, water coolers over here. We're going to have some pizza at um, around noon or so. Yeah, and some sodas and things. Um, what else? Uh, I think I may have the only shop on the, uh, you know, in North America with no Christmas decorations. But uh, you know, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you guys. And you know, we are having. If you, if you want to buy anything, we're, we're giving five percent discount off today. So, um, other than that, I mean, I what I want to do is really introduce a couple of my good friends here that are going to be really our guest speakers today. Okay, both these guys are Lotus owners with extensive track experience. Okay, Carl Shaloff is our, going to be really our lead you know, speaker today and kind of walk you through the different aspects of doing an alignment you know, on cars. And Carl has been tracking you know, and owning all sorts of cool sports cars for many, many years, but he got involved in the Lotus community probably four or five years About ago. Five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. And He's a very meticulous guy about getting his car set up and has learned a lot of things and come up with a bunch of tricks on how to get the cars dialed in. Has helped out quite a number of our uh, community, if you will, getting cars you know, set up very, very you know, well so that they, they actually perform correctly. Um, and Andrew Kern here is another good friend of mine that is actually the Lotus Challenge Series Rookie of the Year this year. So he's been competing with his Exegest, doing really, really well. And he's also come up with a few different tricks. So between the two of these guys, we're going to try to you know, illustrate some different techniques that you can use as you're aligning your various cars. Um, if you didn't pick up one of the handouts, please do, because there's a lot more detail in there. And when you have some time and you want to learn you know, the, the subject matter in some more depth, please go through that to learn more about you know, alignments and suspension. So with that, um, again, thanks for coming. I'm going to hand the, the, the floor over to Carl who's going to walk you through the basics here of the life. Thanks, Janu. Um, if anybody's going to the LA Auto Show, or has been, anybody here been to the LA Auto Show? Do you see that green uh, 211? That's now Andy's car. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's, a proud, he's a proud new owner of that. So, um, but what we're going to talk about today is, is, is something is how to set up your car. How I ended up having to do this was in 1987, I had a Carrera I took to a dealer to have lowered and aligned. And driving at home, the steering wheel was 45 degrees off center. Uh, the car was sitting basically on three wheels. And I took it back to the dealer, and what they did is they took the steering wheel off, unbolted it, and moved it, and stuck it back on. <laughs> and so it took me a long time to figure out how to do these things at home without a chassis bench, without you know forty thousand dollars of alignment equipment. And really, what we want to do today is just understand some of the basic concepts. You can go into so much detail on this stuff. We could discuss caster for three hours. I mean, but what we're just going to give you is an overview. The lead behinds that we've prepared is a combination of information out of the local shop manuals that give you the step-by-step -step procedure for adjusting camber and toe and caster. And also some other information that we pulled that gives you a little more understanding of what toe does from a standpoint of handling, toe in and out, caster. And then there's a very uh, in-depth information off of a post that Andy has done also on step-by-step -step of going through this procedure. And then one of the other useful things in there probably for me the, the most useful thing is this chart that you'll find in there. And what this will allow you to do is take any type of measurement. You can take it in thousands of an inch and uh, equate that into percentages of degrees or minutes, which is, is really very handy when, when you're setting up a car. Does everybody know here 
the basic terms. Everybody know camber? Is there anybody not understand camber? It's real, okay. And caster and tow. What we're going to talk about is real simply looking at the front of the car. This is a car coming towards you. Camber is the top of the wheel leaning in or out. If it leans in, it's called negative camber. If it's out, it's positive. You don't see cars today with positive camber much. The old BMW 2002 16.2s, if you ever remember them coming at you, those cars actually had positive camber on, on, on the front wheel. But today, most manufacturers will run some negative camber. The reason why you have negative camber basically is to flatten out the contact patch of the tire. When you turn a corner, the tire would want to roll over otherwise. So you're basically loading the tire to keep the, the tread flatter on it. So we're going to talk about measuring and adjusting camber. We're going to talk about tow. And I, I did this is from the top of a car. Tow in, real simply, is the front of both of the wheels is closer than the back. Zero tow would be, this dimension would be equal. Tow out would be, the back would be closer than the front. Measuring toe is a, is a little tricky. The most critical dimension in this whole thing, and that's what we're going to discuss with the springs and how we measure it, is having the rear toe even. You can get a, 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 a total toe measurement, but it has to be even on both sides. And the reason why is it will cause a car to dog track. If you have the two rear wheels like this, and these are the two front wheels, what will happen if this wheel is towed in a little, and this one not quite as much, the car will go in this direction. It will tend to want to even out the angle in the rear wheel. What that happens there, if you have a steering wheel here that's straight, look at your steering wheel straight, your wheels are going straight, your front wheels will want to go in this direction too. So your car will actually dog track down the road. So that's why having the rear toe equal on both sides is so critical. Uh, if you look at any NASCAR racing today, you see and when they do the straight on shot of NASCAR, you notice the cars look like they're going sideways. What they do actually is they put their solid rear axles, but their front axle is not parallel to the rear. They actually cock the rear axle to cause the cars to dog track because they're only turning in one direction. So they're actually running them like that. All right, measuring camber, first thing that we're going to do. Now measuring camber, you can do in several different ways. You can use, Andy will show you, he's got a neat little uh, gauge, a laser tow gauge. We'll show you three very simple ways of doing it. One is a commercial camber gauge. Two steps in this, you calibrate it for a level surface and then you take a reading off the wheel. And this will read in degrees 2.1, 2.2, it will read in, in eighth of an inch, quarter inch if you want that, or it will read percentages of degrees. Most camber is expressed 2.1 degrees, 2.2 degrees, those types of things. What On these cars in general, for settings, for streets, your Lotus is, is the front if you pull out all of the shims you, you see in here, you can get a little less than one degree. The rears, you have a lot of room. You can go up to probably almost three. Optimum for street is about, and even, even track without doing any mechanical work to the arms to increase camber, is uh, in the back about 2.4, 2.5, 2.6 minus, in other words, leaning in. And the front, you can get up to almost, almost a degree with a stock car. Anything above that in the front, and they do respond better to more camber, you have two choices. You can actually mill, modify the stock steering arm, or Chenu actually manufactured, which is a better solution, 